Now, I buy a lot of consoles from this uh, eBay seller called Japan for you, uh, mostly because they're dirt freaking cheap, and every now and then I need something for parts, and I don't really care if it works, yada yada. And, you know, you're already paying for shipping. You might as well get this, you might as well get that, so on and so forth. And then $100 later, and <laughs> a few weeks later, at your door are plenty of new consoles and toys and projects to play with. I bought this DS, obviously it's in two pieces. When I bought it, it was in one piece, but it was already broken. You can see the hinge on this side is broken off and on this side is broken off. Surprisingly enough though, the top still works perfectly fine. I bought this with the intention to make a what's called Game Boy Macro, which is basically you take the top half of the DS off and then you can use it to play Game Boy Advance games. The problem is, this one doesn't seem to like the resistors that I have. You turn it on, green light comes on, screen flashes, it goes dead. Now, I could fix that with the proper sized resistor, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to reshell it in this case I bought. Uh, this is a graphite reproduction case that I bought from China. It's not fantastic, but if I'm being honest, it's the best Nintendo DS case I've ever bought so far. Um, I don't know, this is probably only the third case that I've bought, and in 2018 I'm surprised that they're still actually making these. Well, actually, they might not even still be making this. This might be like overstock or something. Uh, my one complaint is that on the top hinge here, since this is painted with like a, a, a metallic paint, this top hinge missed that paint. It's painted on this side, which means they just, you know, sprayed it from the front and then that was the end of that. But just right here, it's missing some paint. You can kind of see that with the light on. Let me turn off maybe, no. Well, you can see how it's not reflecting the same as the rest of the case. But you know what? For the 12 something dollars that I paid for this, I'm happy with it. So. Let's put this in that. First thing I'm gonna need to do, take the bottom off, pull the battery, get it out of this shell. Now you can see my battery, based on the way the light's reflecting, it's bulging a little bit. Uh, it's not at the point where I'm going to stop using it, but it's at the point where I should stop using it. Uh, the the difference being, this thing could let go at any time, but, I mean, it, it's been okay all this time. It's probably going to be fine. Um, but with lithium-ion batteries, that's not exactly a risk that you should take, you know, if you don't have to, you know what I mean? Okay, where is my tri-wing? Is that, yeah, that fits, okay. My apologies, still getting used to this new uh, screwdriver set. That clearly does not fit. No. That is not the right size. I'm going to strip the screw if I continue that way. So aside from this cracked hinge, this DS was actually in, in uh, pretty good shape when I got it. I started, I cut off all the broken part, bits of the hinge and I started kind of like filing it down, sanding it down. So this case might eventually you know, still house a, a, a Game Boy Macro, but this DS itself is going to go in that graphite case and I'm just going to call it a day until I get some more parts in. Luckily, or unluckily, depending on your point of view if you're in my wallet, uh, I did order some more parts and consoles. Uh, those should be here hopefully by the end of the week, and today is Tuesday. So hopefully by Friday I should get them in. And then next week is Christmas, so if I don't get them in by Friday it's going to be a little, uh, little dicey as far as when I get them. I don't know, we'll see. And I'm pretty sure I ordered more DS consoles. 
Because, you know, they're only a couple bucks when they're broken. And these things are kind of fun to fix. All right, so you got to take out all the screws. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tri-wing screws in the bottom. Two of those are in the battery compartment, two across the top, and then two on the other side, and then one in the Game Boy Advance slot. After you get those seven out, that just lifts off. Um, you can see where I accidentally drilled a hole in this motherboard and had to run some bodge wires. But, you know, other than the, uh, you know, we'll just pretend those aren't aren't there. You know, it's, just, it's a completely stock console, I swear. Works just fine. Now. <laughs> Alright, once you get the bottom off, you got to switch over to Phillips. And there are four Phillips screws. One on each side, and then one on the bottom, and then one... God, I didn't even bother to screw that down. Whoops. And then there's this one in the cartridge. Whoops. In the uh, cartridge slot. I guess that's how you know you have the right screwdriver. All right. Once you got those four screws out, you might as well take these shoulder buttons out. Be careful, there's little springs. Luckily, this thing isn't like a DS, or excuse me, this is a DS. Luckily, this thing isn't like a Game Boy Advance SP or I think a DS Lite where those springs will just fuck off on you. Alright, now I want to take this ribbon cable out and then underneath this one there are two more. This big one that I just pulled out is the LCD itself and then these two are the touchscreen and the backlight. Once you've got all three of those out. Now if you're taking this apart and it still has the top half on it, you'll have to re release this bale and undo this Wi-Fi antenna cable here. Uh, but since there's no top on this console, I don't have to do that. Once you've got those three ribbons out, you just lift this off and we will set this aside. Actually, no, we will not set this aside. There's something I have to desolder somewhere. Oh no, I already, I never soldered it in the first place. That's why it didn't work. Okay, nothing to desolder. All right, I'm gonna set this aside for now and start work on the top because as far as putting this thing back together, you need to put the top on first. So, oh, there's my other tri-wing. Use that. I need, oh, it's right here to my left. You gotta pay more attention, huh? All right, so I'm gonna use this box cutter to remove these little rubber pads. I'm just gonna kinda stick it in between the shell and the rubber and just trying to kinda lift it off. Now these things are held down with adhesive and I'm trying my best not to absolutely ruin them. Though I suppose it really does not matter if I ruin this shell because there is, this shell is never gonna get put back together on account of these broke-ass hinges. But, I don't know, it's still, it's still good practice if you do work on systems like this occasionally. And I do do work on systems like this occasionally. And I very rarely get all four of these off without fucking something up. So far I'm two for two, but that can change. I can change real quick. You want to be careful you don't do exactly like I did. If you ever want to reshell these things, I just put a nice, oh, you can't really see it. Maybe if I had better lighting, but I just put a nice scratch in it. Probably because I was just saying something about how I'm two for two, yeah.
All right, there we go. Got all four. The pads survived, which is a nice bonus. If I ever want to reuse those. Not sure what I'm going to use them on. Because they're blue. But once you've got those four off, there's just four Phillips screws underneath. And you got to use the... Uh, the Phillips screwdriver there, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> Stick the chai wing in that hole, it's just gonna fuck off on you. And these Phillips screws are the same screws that are in the motherboard. So there are only, so far, two different types of screws. There's the black tri wings and then the silver Phillips. Eight Phillips total and seven tri point or tri wing. I can never keep the two tri, keep the two Keep track of the two, yeah. All right, once you've got those four screws, helps if you get all four screws. All right, there we go. Once you've got all four of those screws, this is just held together with little snaps. I like to stick my thumb nail in there and just slide it along as the snaps release. And you can set this aside. This is still intact if I want to use that on another console. This is the part that's broke. And apparently one of the clips broke off. Two of the clips broke off. But that's okay. To take this out, there are two more Phillips screws. And these ones are shorty screws. They're half the length of the other Phillips. Yeah. All right, this is on the left-hand side here. This is the Wi-Fi antenna. And it also has leads for the speaker because the speaker just kind of sits in there. These are the exact same speakers that are in an SP and they use those same annoying spring contacts. And then the right side is the same thing except it has a ribbon cable coming from the base of the unit and then going to the screen. This is the only console, the DS Fat, the only console or electronic device that I've ever seen ever that the ribbon cable is separate from the screen. These are usually one piece and I'm guessing that's what they did with the next iteration to save some money. I don't know why they did it differently here except that this LCD itself is completely interchangeable with the one on the bottom except that you know you have to either install or remove the touch panel okay anyway this is all one unit to get this out you could just kind of twist or if yours is super brittle just break it it's not really how I wanted that to go because this is held down with adhesive there we go all right, well, that's a new one. All right, and then there's this little spacer that's made of circuit board material, but minus the copper layer. And now I'm gonna start putting it back together. Now, I'm already seeing a problem with this. I don't know. I don't think this came with hinges. And my DS only had one hinge. The other was uh, MIA. Pretty sure these things use two hinges, unlike the DS Lite, which only uses one. I don't know. I'll burn that bridge when I get there, though. All right, so you just pop that apart. Same way. And you can probably clean it when you're done, because it's going to get dirty. While you're putting this back together, that drops in there like that. It's going to go up there. I'm going to put this spacer back in there, even though it's not strictly necessary because it's held down with, uh, with adhesive. It's like a sticky gasket. It's not exactly adhesive. All right, got to put your speakers back in there.
All right. And then gotta put your shorty screws back in. Now, since this is a new shell, they usually don't come with threaded holes. So you're gonna have to kind of thread it as you're putting it back together. You also have to be careful to route these wires. Doesn't seem to be a good way to do this. There we go. No. This doesn't seem to fit. That's interesting. This shell has an extra little part that sticks out, and that's why it's not fitting. And that's also why I have flush cutters. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't important. I doubt it since it wasn't on the original. And hey, what do you know? Now that fits. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a fresh shell. So screwing these screws back in is going to be a little bit more difficult than if you were just putting it back together using the original shell. And I was just just double checking that that didn't like thread all the way through and start coming out the other side because I've done that before. It shouldn't happen with the stock screws, but you never know China if they uh, made some modifications to the design. So I just screwed that in and it stripped out the hole completely. There's nothing holding that down but uh, hope and prayers. All right, let's route this cable. I bet that goes through that hole. And I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it like that so it cuts across the corner of the screen because I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. And then I'm gonna clip this back down. And there we go, there's the top assembled. I'll go ahead and pop these screws in. Like I said, just the four standard Phillips. I've probably forgotten something, and I'll probably be removing these. So I'm not going to put the black rubber covers on just yet. But I'll still put the screws in. So this screw just completely stripped out on me. It's not going anywhere. And I think that has something to do with the fact that the motherboard, even though they're held in with the same screws, I think those screws are from an aftermarket unit, not OEM. So I'm trying to find the screws that were in the top. Hoping they look different, but so far, no good. Probably come back to this. If you can, you want to reuse your original screws. You don't want to use the screws that it came with. There's no real good way to hold this. So this top one I might have to drill out because it's already stripped. All right, yeah, I'll come back to that later. Hopefully I don't have to take this apart. All right, I will set that aside. Start getting work done on this part. So I can use my original black buttons I can use the buttons that it came with, which are the same color, I think. Yeah, same color. Or I have a parts console somewhere 
with white buttons. Let me go get the white buttons, see how those look. I'll be right back. So it turns out I lied about the white buttons. Here's my parts console. It's a rose pink or whatever the heck color it's supposed to be. Uh, it's already in pieces and there's no shoulder buttons. But I already used the buttons on something else. So, oh well, that's not happening. But I can use the hinges from this unit. So it's a good thing I went and got it anyway. And this is the console I put the buttons in. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. But this top half is one of the original shells that I bought. And it's actually held up pretty well over the years. But, oh wait, no, this is the, uh, this is the blue one. This was a blue console. This is an OEM blue console. And this part is the blue piece that it came with. What happened was it cracked in the middle here. And the aftermarket shell that I purchased to replace it, I don't know what the hell happened, but it came, it came and uh, the shell was so warped that it didn't fit together. I ended up getting a refund on that, and then I just super glued this together, sanded it down, and sprayed it black primer. Uh, this was a gift for my stepfather while he was out long haul trucking. And uh, he got some pretty good use out of it, but I didn't have time to finish painting it before I gave it to him. Uh, with paint, you're supposed to let it cure so many days before you start fucking with it. And I didn't have the time to do that because I expected the aftermarket shell to work. Anyway, okay, I'll set this aside for now. I'm just going to reuse these buttons here. And to do that, I'm just going to pop this out. Transform over one by one. I should probably do the screen first. That might make way more sense. Oh, but I already see a problem. All right, let's see if it's as bad as I think it is. Just get the rest of these buttons in here. That's fine. I thought that the one of these buttons, I think it's A specifically, wasn't sitting down flush, but it looks to be fine. Just looks funny on the other side. Okay. All right. Pop the bottom screen out. This thing is super gross. I've already removed it and started cleaning it up, but uh, clearly I need to pause and do a better job while I have this thing apart because if I don't do it now ew, I'm never gonna do it uh, okay I'm gonna pause in just a moment to go ahead and clean this up but before I do so make sure you transfer over or I'm just gonna show make sure you transfer over that little light pipe thing you're not really gonna notice until it's too late if you don't and even then, it's not that noticeable, but you know, it's, it's the little things. It looks so much better with it. You might as well do it. Okay, excuse me for a moment. I'm just going to pause and clean this up with isopropyl alcohol. And uh, there's a screen protector on this thing that I'm going to remove because it's all nice and scratched up. Just a moment. All right, I am back. I've got all that cleaned up. We should be good to go. I took the time to clean up both the buttons and the pads. The pads, all I did was just run under the tap, and then I dried them off on my shirt. Nothing important. It really does not matter how clean these are, because these just serve as an interface between the physical buttons that you press and then the actual electrical buttons that actuate. These are little tactile micro switches, like on the Game Boy Advance SP. And then the D-pad, you have to be careful don't know how well this makes out on the video, but this side sticks up higher than this side. And it is keyed. So I flipped it around while I was uh, handling it. You can see it's still kind of dirty, but I got, I got most of it. 
uh, but the side that sticks out the most, the high side, unlike on other consoles, it actually goes on the inside. Thankfully it's keyed, so it's pretty easy to figure out. The power button is the same way. One, the left side from this angle is higher than the right side. And just put that down in there. Still got the lens there. This cleaned up really nicely. You can see there's a nice shine. There's still some streaks. I gotta go over it again, but you know, good enough for now. That just drops in and that'll hold itself. There's some foam on the back that'll press against the motherboard and hold it down and that'll be good enough. Okay, next thing, even though I just went through all of that, probably shouldn't have because I forgot to install this. So how this goes on is I'm going to flip this over and take the screen out before I drop it. The buttons will probably stay in their membranes, but this ribbon cable needs to get fed through this hole here. And so I'm going to take it with the contacts down, slip it through, I probably have it backwards find out in just a minute. You have to kind of go at an angle, not drop it. That doesn't help. Oh wait, no, it's with the contacts up. Yeah, I had it backwards. The contacts up. There we go. And slide that through. And then pull up the slack. Don't forget to feed in the microphone, or excuse me, the uh, the wireless antenna on the DS Lite. There's a microphone wire as well. And then that'll sit like that. And so I just remembered exactly what I was forgetting. I do have to take this apart because the hinges go through from the top. And the hinges I'm going to use are from this pink one here. I'm going to set this aside for just a moment I, uh, while I break this thing. Um, <laughs> okay. so you can see one of the marvelous modifications that I've done to this thing, and I do not recommend you do this. I, I bypassed the fuse. I didn't have any spares handy. Don't, don't do that. Install fuses the proper way. All right, there is a screw in here, so I'm gonna screw that down. I don't know why there's a screw in there. I mean, there's supposed to be a screw in there. There's supposed to be six more. I don't know why there's only one. I'm going to keep these screws separate from the rest because I'm going to reuse these on the black console here. Pretty sure these are OEM. I'm just taking out the four Phillips screws. Now, I haven't done this in like six years, moving the hinges from this thing. And by this thing, I mean DS's in general, not this specific one. I've never removed the hinges from this specific one. Okay. Someone bumped my lamp there. All right, that comes off. Oh, there's something missing. I'm not sure what. Okay. And these hinges come out pretty easily. You just, I just take a screwdriver, push from that side. That one comes out. And then it's the same thing for this one, but I need to take this cover off. I'm going to push this one back in just to hold it for now. Take that screw out that I just screwed down. And I can probably get away with not taking out the screen. Yeah. So this thing is like the SP. There's a little screw down in there under the ribbon cable. 
just Phillips. Take that out. Same length as the uh, as the rest of the Phillips screws. Now I can flip that back over. Pretty sure that screen is good, so this is probably going to become my macro. All right, and then same thing with this hinge. Just push them out. Try not to lose your screwdriver. And now these hinges are different sizes. All right, I'm just going to put this mess off to the side. All right. Well, I suppose I could put this one in. Just the short one. And these are keyed, they only fit one way. Or is it two ways? Upside down is the same though. Regardless, they are keyed. Sorry, bear with me. Fingers aren't quite as nimble as they used to be. I'm just gonna grip it with my pliers like that. Try not to wreck this thing. Okay, that's not working. I don't know. Let me get this apart. I'll come back to that in a second. Might have to drill this screw out. And I'm not excited about that. This is a brand new case, and I'm going to ruin it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, one moment. I'll be back while I fuck this thing up and try and get the screw out. Okay, somehow, through a miracle of nature, I didn't fuck that up. Um, luckily, this screw is made of some sort of hardened butter material. So it drilled out ridiculously easily. All I did was drill the head off. The shaft is still in there. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to try and work that out. Bow chicka bow wow. But if I uh, take out the remainder of the screws here, I should be able to work around that one. And then once I get, yeah, once I get these three off, I should be able to slip the cover off. And then I'll have more room to get the screw out. Okay. Hopefully, without breaking anything and ruining my nice new shell. Oh, yes, that did come off. And there's the screw. I'm going to set this aside right there. And. There we go. Okay. Back to this. So let's try the long one first this time. So 
So you just gotta rotate that one till it slides in, and then just gotta slide it in. I'm gonna use pliers to try and push them, but it's not going. And back it out a little bit. Okay. And lift that up. Let's see how it's rotated. So it looks kind of like it's rotated up. Like it might have moved when I removed it. So I'm going to try and push it in, holding the shell like this. I'm just going to use my screwdriver. Though I think it's going to have to be at this angle. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Oh well. I tried. I can go through this hole. I forgot about that. Since there's only one hinge in. Oh, my screwdriver's not long enough to do that. Never mind. There we go. Slid in, but not all the way, just barely. I am going to use my pliers for this because on my pliers I have a flat file and I think. The flat file is much less likely to slip than the pointed screwdriver. Though since I used it at an angle, that didn't really make a difference. Anyway, it's all the way in, because now the shell is staying up. And I can just bend that down. And same thing, but now the other side. And if I'm not mistaken, this needs to be open too. But I think this needs to be open to the flat angle. This one's a bit easier, because you can get at it. And, ta-da! There's the hinges! I only barely didn't break it. Okay, slip that back on. Cover's not going on now. Oh, that just needs to go in first. I guess they did some weird mold where this part needs to slide in first. Just snapping it together. I'll put the screws in later. Even though now I probably don't need to take it apart again. Okay. Next, before I get further, I'm going to empty out this wonderful bag of parts. Those are the buttons it came with. Okay, and this is the stuff I need. Mostly just this hinge cover. And it came with new rubber pads. Go figure, it came with the rubber pads, but not the... Uh... Did it come with extra buttons? Oh no. 
in this little baggie are the black buttons and then in here are the two gray buttons because for whatever reason A and B aren't the same color as the rest. And it's like that on all DS consoles as far as I can tell. Okay. Oh yeah. Gotta put this in. I'm gonna use the screw from the pink one. And that goes you could just set that over. There we go. All right. Drop the screen in again. And if I'm not mistaken, this this ribbon cable actually goes under this foam. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do this right instead of just doing it the easy way. Peel that up. Put it in place. Stick that back down. And then it kind of there's a a little hole that it fits in that you can feed it in and then it sticks up like that and you got to drop the motherboard in but the hard part is you got to feed the three ribbons on the right through feed the big one first because that one's on top and then I got one of the two I'm just gonna set it down and then maybe I can get that one from this side with my tweezers. Yep. I don't think I broke it. Should be good. Famous last words. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and plug this top screen in. Gold contacts down, not up. If I can. There we go. I'm going to plug this antenna in before I forget. Unlike the DS Lite, you don't have to bother running that underneath the cartridge slot, thankfully. And then I need to plug in. I don't need to plug in the touchscreen to test it, but I'll plug it in because i got to plug the screen in. And there's no point unplugging the screen just to plug this in. good. These bales just kind of slide out, not up, but out. And you can slide the cable in and then close the bale. And then the big bale for the LCD ribbon itself, that one slides up, not out. I made that mistake the very first time I opened up one of these consoles. And I broke the bail off. Okay. So that is everything reconnected. At this point, you can do one of two things. First, put your four screws in, put the bottom on, put the seven screws in, and you're done. But I am going to skip all the screws and the shoulder buttons. Just double check that it's actually working. Hey, what do you know? It's working. It should be set to auto boot. Let me go grab a cartridge. I'll be right back. Okay, this is a it's totally legit version of Pokemon Soul Silver. It's really just a flash cart. But I bought it on eBay. Knowing that it would be fake. Auto boot is one of those settings that's persistent even if you pull the battery out. 
so you don't have to walk through the startup on this thing. And let's try Doom. I hear no sound. I don't know if there's supposed to be sound at this point. There it goes. I don't know why it took a sec, but uh it seems to be working. Which uh if those traces that I fucked up on the bottom if I didn't fix those right, I wouldn't have any sound. Because that's all those were. These traces just run to the uh, to the volume slider. Okay. That way I'm going to use those for the top. And use these. To hold the motherboard down. So the four screw holes are actually marked on the silk screen of the board with that white circle that white circle there's half a white circle on mine but if I didn't accidentally drill a hole in it there'd be a full white circle what happened was uh, one of these screws I went to take it out and instead of moving the screw head just sheared right off well Actually, no, it didn't shear off because I had to drill it out. And instead of using my hand drill, my cordless hand drill, I decided, hey, let me try out the Dremel. It should work for this. Uh, well, here's a note for all you people out there. Don't try the Dremel. Because <laughs> what happened, I mean, the Dremel worked great until it didn't. <laughs> it bounced off the screw and then went straight down through the motherboard. The motherboard is a lot softer than the screw and uh, so the pressure I was applying to cut through the screw meant that it took a big chunk out of the motherboard. Okay, now I need to put the bottom. With DS lights, this little um, stylus silo usually isn't applied or excuse me, uh, installed, but it looks like it is on here. Pull that out. This is missing the little square nut that retains the, um, whatchamacallit, the battery door. So I'll just pull it from this one, maybe. If it wants to commute. There we go. And you know what? This is just black. This isn't painted the same as the rest of the console. I'm just gonna use this bottom. I'm sure it'll fit better. I'll put that back in. Uh, it's a little dirty, but it should fit just fine. Peel that tape off. I don't know why that's stuck down. Before you pop the bottom, pop the bottom on. Excuse me. I'm gonna put these buttons back in. These are the original black ones, not the white ones that I took out of it. And they go in just like that, except you kind of want to make sure the spring doesn't go all sideways on you. There we go. It helps to. Uh, insert the spring first and then do the hinge and it just kind of angles down and those will stay those won't go anywhere on you because you got to flex them to get them out and then slip that on all that looks good except for that sticker but that was like that so let's pop these screws back in I'm gonna use my other screwdriver for this just because I should be just because you know like I said it's a new shell there's no threads 
even though it's just metal boring into plastic it's still easier to do with a screwdriver that has a bigger handle so I'm just getting them started with this screwdriver because that's what I picked up <laughs> Okay, I am missing, oh there it is. That's all of them, let me switch to my other screwdriver. This thing has like the spinny black plastic thing so you can put it against your palm and apply pressure. Hi! My cat just got up. He probably thinks it's dinner time. And looking at the clock, it is just about dinner time. So I gotta finish this up so I can feed him. Oof. Come on. That sounds and feels like uh, the hole itself just got reamed out because it kind of clicked and then it just went loose. I forgot to screw that one down. cover. It's kind of gross because I forgot to clean it. I was thinking I was going to use the new shell, not the old one. Oh well, I can clean it later. Oh, got to put these screws back in. went down just fine this time. Amazing what a difference quality screws make. Never cheap out on your fasteners. Unless you have to, but I can't really think of any situation where you would actually have to cheap out on your fasteners. They work so much better when you don't do that. Wow, these things strip out so easily. Just gonna wipe the top screen down, get all my fingerprints off of it. Bottom one I'll clean later. Alright, nice and clean. I'm gonna stick this on there. This is that screen lens that it came with. Oh. I don't know why they make this separate. Piece. So much more annoying to remove when it doesn't come with the uh, other part. And then get 
these things. For some reason they give you four bumpers instead of uh, two. Like the original pads, the adhesive pads here, the top two stick up to provide some sort of like, I guess dampener, excuse me, damper. It does not make the system moist. Um, but the aftermarket ones just give you four. The idea is so that when it's closed, the top ones rest on the bottom shell so that it's not rubbing. But in practice, that doesn't really happen and the thing just rubs like crazy. And then you end up with marks that look kind of like this on your console. If you've ever closed your DS and put it in your pocket, you're causing that sort of damage. And it should be good to go. Oh, missing one important thing. Can't get it. There we go. Oh man, that's awful. Oh, what the hell is that? It's brand new and there's all these, these marks across the top. Oh, that's ridiculous. They are going to lose some points for that. They being the, uh, the AliExpress seller that sent this to me. So I bought this thing for, like I said, it was about 12 bucks shipped. It's quite a bit pricier than the DS Lite shells, but you know, some people like the DS Fats. I like the DS Fats. Is today the 18th? Yes, today is the 18th. And the current time it is 1900 hours. Or it will be, whatever. It will be off by like 30 seconds. Doesn't matter too much. Let's turn that off. You can see the screens. And ta-da, there we go. Uh, one of the cool things about the original DS Fat console, even though you can, you can only do this when you're outside of the game, you can turn the screen lighting off entirely. It's kind of weird. People say that these things are front lit, but honestly, it looks backlit to me. I can't tell. Um, one thing I am noticing... Sorry about that, my phone crashed. Not sure what happened. Um, but anyway, one thing I'm noticing is that this top screen is absolutely horrible. You can see it's kind of cutting off on both sides there, left and the right. It's not very... it's not sized properly. So what I'm going to do, especially because it has those marks up at the top, I'm going to try and remove it without taking this thing apart. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to stick some tape. And this masking tape is not going to work. I need something a little bit harder. Or I need to come at it from a different angle. Let's try a different angle first. Yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. Let's try some duct tape. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a little piece of packing tape instead of duct tape. I think this might work just as well. So just stick it down. I'm gonna try and peel it up. No, that's not working. Oh, fine. I'll go get the suction cup. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. If you've ever bought a cheap cell phone repair kit, you probably got one of these with it. Well, 
this is what they're for, kind of. But it's not working. There we go. Teamwork. Rip that stupid thing off. I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to wipe off the inside with my shirt because I got my fingers all over it. And then try and remove this without destroying the shell. It's probably not going to happen. Chunk of shell. There we go. Stick that down. And there we go. I guess needs a little bit of cleanup, but ta-da! There's my snazzy new DS console. Well, new to me. Doesn't quite doesn't quite snap the way I want, but it feels good, so that's all that really matters. Oh, let's do one more thing. Turn that light back on. Original shell did have a sticker at one point. Not at all sure what happened. I guess it wore down. Now what's interesting is there's text underneath that, I think. Looks like some numbers. I don't know. It's very sloppy though. Okay. Da -da -da. Oh shit, which way does this go? My other console has it like that. That one's also OEM. So I assume it goes this way. Probably should have cleaned off that extra adhesive because that's kind of bumpy looking. But oh well, good enough. And just for reference, aside from being a different color, that does look like a legitimate Japanese label. Aside from probably the serial number being on every single reshelled DS. Um, but the U.S. labels have a big old barcode with the serial number. All right, there we go. Thanks for watching. One last addendum. I just flipped this thing over and noticed it was missing something kind of important. I forgot to stick the logo down. Now, normally, sorry, I just bumped the camera. I try and reuse the original one, but with the DS consoles, that I just dropped. With the DS consoles, they uh, colored the logo the same as they colored the shell, and I don't think this teal logo is gonna look good in the black shell. So I'm just gonna use the one that it came with, even though it looks off. I don't know, just stick that in there. Stick it down. Good enough, I say. Not perfect, but it'll do. Thank you.